Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. A few weeks ago on this channel, I took a look at a paper that codifies the entire French tax law. And today I want to take a look at a paper by some of the same authors that steps back from that work and proposes a new programming language to codify law. While that old paper was very much focused on that specific system and implementation for the French tax code, and on modernizing it, this paper proposes a new programming language. Now, of course, this is too large a topic to bite off at once. So right off the bat, the authors limit their scope to the kinds of law that are more computational or algorithmic in nature. And of course, the primary example of that is tax law. The language they're proposing is called CATLA, and its primary design goal is to model and encode the existing structure of the way the law is written so that a lawyer could read the law and then the corresponding Catala source code for encoding that law and actually make sense of what was going on. Now, before we even get into the programming language, we have to understand the structure and logic behind how laws are written. And that is very different from the kind of structured, forward-moving control flow that we are used to in most programming languages. The way the law is written frequently refers to and changes the meaning of previous definitions and reinterprets them and backpatches them in complex ways. The authors go through one example, which is from the UX tax code, that has to do with how much of the proceeds of the sale of a house are exempt from taxes. The general structure is that the law enumerates the conditions under which this exclusion can be applied, but then also follows it up with a number of conditions which either modify or nullify this exclusion. The point is that you cannot simply read the first paragraph of the law, which specifies a straightforward dollar amount for the exclusion, and understand the entirety of it. You have to read the entire statute because paragraphs further down will change the meaning of this paragraph and the conditions under which it is applicable. For example, the next paragraph modifies this first paragraph in place and says that under certain conditions, the exclusion can be more than what was specified in this first paragraph. And further paragraphs get more and more detailed, delve into corner cases of exclusions and conditions and so on. This is a very common pattern in the way laws are written in that they follow this pattern of writing the general case first and then specifying all the special cases after that. This kind of logic is called default logic. And more specifically, the variant that laws most commonly use is known as prioritized default logic where you have default values guarded by conditions, and then a number of special cases after that. Now let's take a look at the language itself. The very first thing we have to do is encode the things that we are talking about before we get to how things are computed based on them. If you take this tax law example that we just looked at, we have to encode things like time periods with starting and ending dates. We have to encode money in terms of the gains from the sale of that residence. And then we have to encode certain conditions. At this point, these are all just declarations. This looks very verbose, but that was an explicit design choice. The syntax was designed in close collaboration with lawyers and they preferred more verbose keywords, which improved readability for them. It was very important that Katala be understandable by lawyers. Once we get past the declarations of things like time periods and amounts of money, the next two important concepts in Katala are scopes and context. A scope roughly outlines the law's structure, and the context tells us that various values 
are to be determined later depending on the exact context. Intuitively, scopes can be thought of as functions and contexts can be thought of as parameters and local variables. Continuing with the example of the law we just looked at, we see a scope talking about the conditions that a single person needs to satisfy to get this exemption. We have requirements on ownership and requirements on usage. And if both of those requirements are satisfied, then the requirements for this context are fulfilled. At this point, we have an executable rendition of this part of the law. If you provide the inputs, which in this case are the gain from the sale of the property and the various time periods that you have occupied and resided in it, the Katala interpreter will compute the amount to be excluded from your income. The interpreter takes on the task of doing a control flow analysis and assigning values to variables in the correct order. Finding cycles would be an error because the law is not supposed to have cyclic reasoning. Note that Katala is not Turing complete. It does not have recursion and that is very intentional. And when it comes to actually encoding laws in Katala, the authors advocate a kind of pair programming methodology in which lawyers and programmers work together to write Katala code. They have some promising results here which show that lawyers are able to understand this kind of code. They were asked if they can read this code conveniently and most of them said yes. They were also asked if they can associate the code to the meaning of the law that it's talking about and again most of them said yes. When asked whether they could certify whether the code does what the law says, the answers were more mixed. But the authors hypothesize that that might be because these questions were put to a group of French lawyers, whereas the law they had encoded was part of the US tax law. As a case study, the authors encoded all of the French family benefits laws in Katala and provided a web interface on top of it. They were able to verify the output of the Katala implementation against the official state-sponsored simulator and found no issues. However, very interestingly, they did find one discrepancy and that pointed to a bug in the official state-sponsored implementation, which was later fixed. So that was a quick look at a new programming language to encode laws and the default logic that it is based on and how it was applied to a bunch of tax laws, which is probably the most appropriate domain to look at an initial application. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.